Yeah, thank you so much. So there we left last time. The secret God beneath the threshold dwells. Dwells. Yeah, thank you. And I think this uh, was here very important. And every line in Savitri is something where you know we can, like a mantric line, as they say. And if we reflect upon even one line, I think that's really at times it's more than enough, uh, more more than a scripture. You know, it's one line is so rich. Our life is a paradox with God for key. So this is something which comes up in prayers and meditations again and again, if we have observed, you know, that what is mother doing there that again and again, she is sharing. I want the unification to be more and more complete. I want the identification with the divine consciousness to be more and more complete. And this is our journey as human beings. So as if God has become a man, he has limited himself. And why has he involuted in matter? Why has he limited himself? So that he can find himself again. So that the matter can rise up to the measure of divine. Hmm? His nature we must put on as he puts on ours. We are sons of God and we must be even as he. So it's not for one, two, three, four special people on this earth that they, they have only the possibility to become divine and rest of us just have to you know be content with a discontentful life so that's not it it's each one it's our destiny god is our destiny it's like you know we were sharing last time that if every i have i have a diamond and i put it in drain even then the value of diamond remains the same so i think this unification with our consciousness of a true consciousness which nowadays we have been reiterating also through the meditation morning meditation sessions that to identify not with the surface consciousness which is fleeting thoughts fleeting feelings stories come and go images about myself and others they have no meaning at all they have no meaning at all so i you know one thing which came to me was i was meeting friends uh, from childhood and it was very, very interesting to see that as a child, you have images about other children around you. You know, like, for example, you're in seventh, eighth or ninth, you begin to have images that this person is like this, that person is like that. And it is so amazing to see when you're talking now to these people who have become adults, that the same person about which I had an image in my head and that was a very concrete image. The same person was something else in somebody else's mind. You know, so somebody else was seeing that person through a different filter. I was seeing that person through a different filter. But all these are just filters. They are not the actual person. You know, so when we live too identified with our thoughts, feelings and ideas and images about myself and others, we live a limited and suffocated life. So I may think that I know this person since I know this person for a long time. I know how he is or she is. But do we really know? No. And those of us who have been on this journey of inner discovery, we know that we don't know ourselves. So how can I claim that I know the other person? No matter the person is my spouse or you know my ch child or my in-laws, parents, we really do not know the person. So this recognition that we do not know. We have images, we have perceptions, but they are just a limited thing. They do not tell the whole picture. You know, we see beautiful sunsets, right? All of us have witnessed beautiful sunsets and sunrises. Now, if I look at the sunset, like we look at it from earth, it's beautiful, no doubt. The, the colors are as if they leave you speechless. But again, that is not the whole truth. Because if, I, if I'm looking from far away, imagine that you are in space floating around. How would the sunset or you know appear from there? 
So that's not the absolute truth. No matter how beautiful that may appear. So the identification with the true consciousness, which is this presence of awareness in us, the sense of looking, the knowing that is there in us, which is obscured by feelings and thoughts and all the perceptions. I think that is our key. That is our key here. The, our life is a paradox with God for a key. A paradox is a place where you know, there, there, is, there is no ground that we are able to get. Like you are, the, it's beyond the mind basically because the mind is very happy categorizing people categorizing everything into boxes mind is very happy there because it lives in the known limited mind lives in the known but when i allow myself to be in the unknown then i'm trying to be without the mind beyond the mind not without the mind but beyond the limited conceptual mind So until we rise up to our stature, which is our destiny, until we really unite uh, on the road of uniting with God consciousness, divine consciousness, or our true consciousness. But meanwhile, all is a shadow cast by a dream. And to my musing and immobile spirit, life and himself don the aspect of myth. So burden of a long, unmeaning tale, you know, as if, uh, for those of us who would not at the moment, many a times it happens in our life that we don't know why are we living this life? You know, what is the purpose of this life, this existence? So until that point that we really get to know a little bit that, okay, this is the path I have to tread upon. Uh, until that point, it appears a bit meaningless, you know, as if we are wanderers here and there, not really know where we are going. What is the purpose of this existence? For why? Why is it like that? For the key is hid and by the inconscient kept. I think uh, last time Chitra, you were sharing something on this, you know, how it is this also in temples, we have this secret caves, you know, dark, you have to go deep within the cave and you find this golden temple, golden, you know, kind of deity who's uh, the priests are invoking that deity and it's hid inside the temple. So that's also metaphorical truth that we have to, it's like in the inconscient, the deity is kept, the divine presence is hiding. And that's why they say that the deeper we go in our darkness, it is impossible that we do not discover light. And if we have not discovered the light, we have to go further enough, you know, further into the darkness. The journey is not over. And even when we hit the light, the journey is yet not over because the light also is an infinitely progressing light. You know? Just like Sri Aurobindo says, one realization to a greater realization, one experience to a greater experience, one perfection to a greater perfection. So there is no end to that journey. So this is the secret which we all in our individual lives have to discover for ourselves. Otherwise, it's a half-lived life. So we have to uh, collaborate. We have to collaborate here if we can. So this is where we uh, ended last. And uh, if there are any reflections, please unmute, keep sharing in between. Else we'll just progress ahead. So let us read these new lines today. Uh, Riddhi, you have joined later. Would you like to read? Uh, Monica, I will read the next one. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So anyone who would like to yeah. go ahead next? Yeah. In a body obscuring the immortal spirit, a nameless resident vesting unseen powers with matters, shapes, and motives beyond thought and the hazard of an unguessed consequence. An omnipotent, indiscernible influence, he sits on which he lives and waves his knowledge by the groping mind. Yeah, thank you. In a body obscuring the immortal spirit, you know, so we, we know that matter obscures. Our thoughts obscure 
the blue sky of consciousness for those of us living in ignorance but for those of us living 24/7 in awareness thoughts are no longer an obscurant no they are not the veil anymore but for those of us who identify too much with the thoughts and feelings and you know all that comes and goes the fleeting for us it obscures but for the ones who have known truly even in the body through the body they can see the divine shining for them the body is not the way no but for us with limited intelligence and limited mind for us the body obscures the divine presence and as kabir in his one of his songs he says ya ghat bhitar hira moti you know so in this body itself in this kaya as he says the body itself the form kaya is also form any form you know whether it's stone or plant or insect or anything the divine resides but we are not aware and even if we look at from a scientific perspective here you know the, for example look at a flower so now how beautiful a flower is it is so beautiful and even if a non beautiful thing as a drain for example drain water now why we say that the appearances obscure the truth because on the superficial point of a point uh, drain water may be appearing very ugly because we are conditioned to that you know we are conditioned to know no 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 this is very unhygienic this is very ugly right but for a scientist a true scientist even the drain water is beautiful how because when we look closely under a microscope at the particles in the drain water one cannot say that it is drain water they are beautiful inside same with the flower you know the cells the atoms the electrons jumping from this orbit to that that orbit beautiful magnanimous right so for a true scientist he can see something higher operating in each and every aspect of nature but it he must be a true scientist because otherwise in even in science we get very limited now you know albert einstein he has uh, given many many quotes on this uh, the aspect that we are talking and let me just share one of those it's very inspirational just a second you know look here what he says everyone who is seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe a spirit vastly superior to that of man and one in the face of which we with our modest powers must feel humble you know and this is a scientist who is saying that a scientist who is more than a scientist i would say you know a genius so those of even us in science you know those of us who have really known they have known something greater working and the appearances are not just the appearances there is more to it so in this body obscuring the immortal spirit and again take any form as we were sharing take any form look it under a microscope and you see what is the beauty there even it's a particles of dust drain you know uh, ugly things so so called ugly things lying on the road you know and you see the beauty in them a nameless resident vesting unseen powers so regarding our own bodies human bodies for example there is a nameless resident referring to our inner presence who is filled with who is giving away as if you know distributing who is giving away powers unseen powers now now what is this power of intelligence that i can think about a thing a power of feeling power of emotion deep emotion power of sensitivity where are these coming from because if a leave it to a body you know just the body which is matter we we say but when the consciousness leaves with the same ears i cannot listen with the same nose i cannot breathe 
So there is this nameless resident inside who is giving unseen powers. And even if we take inanimate objects like stone or you know, something which looks inanimate, there also things are happening. But it is so on a crude level that we can't see with our mortal eyes and senses. And the nameless resident is as if he's covered uh, his powers with shapes, with forms, matter shapes, motives beyond thought. And the hazard of an unguessed consequence. And this also, you know, this nameless resident would also refer to uh, the fourth dimension. For example, if I uh, go for a surgery, you know, like imagine that a doctor is kind of trying to find out, open my body and trying to find out where is the spirit. Now the nameless resident cannot be found. We all know that. You know? So I go to look for the spirit, but I cannot find the spirit. All that I find is this organ, that organ, you know, the, the bodily thing that I find. And just like that, if we look at the quantum physics level, an electron jumping from one orbit to another, it releases a photon, you know, it really releases energy out of itself. Now, if you ask someone who is in science, where is this photo photon stored as if there is a bag of photon or something, but there is none, there is none. So an electron is emitting out photon jumping from this orbit to that orbit, but that photon is not like, it cannot be seen in the electron, just like the spirit cannot be seen, the soul cannot be seen in the body. And that's why we, uh, you know, we, we have a hard time believing it, that when I cannot see it, how come it is there? But we know, the, for those of us who know the limits of their senses, you know, they know that uh, it's possible that if I don't see it, doesn't mean that I, it's not there. Right? Because I have my limits. So this is the aspect of fourth dimension. And mother has said that those of us who want to be in touch with their spirit or soul or you know, the inner presence, it is impossible to know it without getting in touch with the fourth dimension. For some of us, it happens organically. Like we are given a glimpse. Uh, we may not know the importance of that glimpse. That's a different matter. But it is impossible that all of us don't have a glimpse of it since we are that. Okay? So that's the fourth dimension. And even at the physical level, the electronic level, the quantum level, we see that that's, we see it in manifestation. That photon comes out of the electron, but it is not, if I dissect an electron, you would not find a photon there. You know? Like it's not to be found, but it jumps out. Where does it jump out from? So that's the mystery, you know, and it's it's just one can just be in awe with this mystery you know, that wow, you know, and then shut shut our mouth up and enjoy it. So this is hidden. You know, the, all these powers, these are hidden beyond thought, beyond consequences. We cannot guess. Uh, you know, with limited mind, we cannot go there. An omnipotent, indiscernible influence. So there is the influence of the resident, inner resident. Omnipotent, it's all powerful, it's all knowing. And the discernible influence is not discernible like you. It's not very palpable influence, but it's throughout there. But And at times it is so obvious that I can't see it. Because when it is non-obvious, then it comes as a striking contrast that look, 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 here it was and it was not there before. It comes as a contrast, I can see it. But this influence that it renders upon the surface being is an indiscernible influence. He sits unfelt by the form in which he lives. So that is the tragedy of our life, if one can say. In other form, we also can say that everyone has their own journey and, you know, it takes time before we rise up to our being and know who we truly are. That is one 
stream of thought or one in another stream of thought we can say oh what a tragedy that i had a full life and i didn't know who i truly am so i don't know i'm not saying which one is correct or not correct but these are various streams of thought in which one can reflect upon it so he sits the inner resident is 24/7 there the the inner king is there he sits unfelt by the form in which he lives and veils his knowledge by the groping mind now there is a purpose also uh, to this forgetfulness why is it veiled this knowledge in a knowledge when it is 24/7 mine why is it veiled why am i not aware of it so masters also have said that as slowly we grow in consciousness as slowly we ripen and mature in consciousness only then the god reveals itself to us that also makes sense right so imagine there is a plastic cup and i pour hot hot kind of you know steaming tea in that cup what would happen to that cup it will melt so the the cup is not strong enough to have to be a container for the hot steaming tea but if the cup is now become like a rocky cup you know it's like not rocking but rocky in the sense made of rock hard and you know maybe granite or marble now it can hold the hot steaming chai or you know tea so that is what happens with us with our experiences that through innumerable experiences through this lifetime and other lifetimes we grow in consciousness the more we grow in consciousness the inner presence reveals itself to us because if it reveals prematurely i would not be able to handle it so because the outer is limited the surface personality is limited the inner is unlimited but the inner also needs a container which is unlimited so slowly as the container the outer container prepares itself so that it can contain more and more and more of the limit uh, unlimited you know, the infinite because it requires a lot of inner strength to hold it and you know we talk about people having beautiful experiences of bliss for example they are shaking you know they are trembling they are shaking why because the outer material is not ready it cannot contain that much of joy so although we want all of us want divine ananda but we, are we ready for it we are not ready for it little bit of joy and you know i personally feel that uh, if you feel a depth and emotion or a connect deep connect even in human love you know i, I personally feel that i need time to uh, be with it and to contain it it's just too much at times so as we grow as we grow as a beautiful and solid container the divine also reveals itself and until then until then it happens that this progression happens it veils it obscures by the groping mind so groping mind is a groping mind is like like trying to make sense of things here and there it is like a parda like a curtain you know imagine that you are sleeping on a bed and immediately someone comes and trap you know he pushes away the curtain and bright sunlight falls on your sleepy eyes you don't feel nice <laughs> so how do you want to get up you want to get up maybe little slowly a little bit of curtain little light and then slowly you open the eyes eyes and the rods and cones in the eyes the cells in the eyes are getting acclimatized to the bright light and then they they can easily contain the bright light also so this is how we grow in consciousness until that point the curtain is necessary so that we don't damage our eyes yeah so ignorance is for a purpose ignorance serves a purpose is in growth of consciousness hmm? so until that he sits unfelt by the form in which he lives and veils his knowledge this is his maya you know as in geeta he says mam maya it's my creation it's not that kahi aur se aa gayi you know and atyachar kar rahi hai hamare upar not like that so this is my creation it's my maya and the, it's for a purpose that the maya is there the maya of limit limiting thoughts conceptions and limitations of beliefs and ideas and opinions 
veils his knowledge and this inner knowledge is full of light it's an all knowing knowledge this inner knowledge and yet it is veiled for a purpose so that's the paradox in which we live that the outer strives to know by making sense of this and that look this window that window we try to make sense and the inner knows we saying okay okay go ahead you know try your limited mind out but we have to try it out because we think that that's how we can live we only later through our experiences we realize that there is a different form of knowing which is by the deeper heart in which we just know which is not dependent upon what i have been socially told what i have been you know my parents have conditioned me the society has conditioned me there is a different kind of a knowing but one needs a great courage to live it out that knowing because all the society pressures family pressures they all come in between and that's the test of of, of our conviction that what is the path for me hmm? so i think i speak at times not at times mostly i speak too much so this it was a little paragraph but i <laughs> maybe talk too much on it uh, anyone who want to uh, share any reflection <clears throat> okay so i'm assuming there is none we will go ahead mm yeah anyone would like to read yeah okay can you hear me i'll read yes please yeah. a wanderer in a world his thoughts have made he turns into a chiaros okay so which were Ch chiaros kuro chiaros kuro of error and truth to find a wisdom that on high is his a wanderer in a world his thoughts have made he turns into a chero skuro of error and truth to find a wisdom that on high is yeah thank you so he the lord he the lord is a wanderer in a world his thoughts have made so who has created this world he himself you know through through his idea through his thought with a capital t maybe right he has created this this world and he is now going around in that world as a wanderer a wanderer in a world his thoughts have made he turns in a chiaroscuro of error and truth now this word chiaroscuro is uh, an italian word i'll just uh, let me share something on this so this is a uh, like there is a play of dark and light through which you create uh, art that's called chiaroscuro look at this here you see how the dark is uh, kind of in contrast with the light and this is how the art is being created so the contrast of the light and dark look at how the drawings have come out you know these paintings so this is called chiaroscuro light and dark a mix of light and dark like here also we see there is a purpose to the darkness there is a purpose to the light and it reveals certain things out of that picture this uh, this kind of a painting so this is called chiaroscuro so, so is this living living light logo also chiaroscuro like <laughs> sorry i i just saw it right after the pictures you show good one so, i have no clue actually this is a new word so yeah maybe in our ignorance it is good one 
<clears throat> so what do we do with our limited minds in our limited conceptions and ideas we try to make sense of this world so the lord himself is trying to make sense of this world through his groping mind now where do i come in the picture again to reflect upon that that it's his world he has forgotten himself he is Uh, given this veil of mind so that he can enjoy the fun of adventure you know he turns in a chiaroscuro of error and truth to find a wisdom that on high is his so all that we are seeking for in our lives is a greater and greater and greater clarity you know, greater sorting in the being greater perfection in the being pure love you know rid of all impurities and all that is our true self love is our true self you know on theory on paper love is our true self compassion is our true self wisdom and knowledge is our true self but right now as we are we are groping you know we are seeking for wisdom but it's not in our hands like comes and goes as if we have no control over it so he is seeking is a wanderer in this world and he is seeking from error and truth he is seeking the true knowledge and the true wisdom true knowledge is actually on the highest states of consciousness they belong to him only you know it's the divine himself so the wisdom the true knowledge uh, knowledge by identity this is all his this is all ours it's our birthright so our highest possibilities are this pure love pure knowing and pure truth beauty harmony this is all ours but that's on the highest level of consciousness where we are ordinarily it it is not there so he turns through this error chiaroscuro of error and truth light and darkness to find a wisdom that on a high is his anything here anyone Okay, so anyone who would like to go ahead and read. As one forgetting, he searches for himself, as if he had lost an inner light. He seeks, as a sojourner, lingering amid alien scenes. He journeys to a home he knows no more. thank you mm. so i think this is the story of our lives again savitri is a uh, story of our lives but this you know this again uh, by masters and mystics this has been said that this is not your true home you know i feel that as if i have been alienated nahi harwa humko na bhave you know in kabir as uh, one of the songs he says that where have you sent me this doesn't you know go well with me this is an alien land i don't belong here you know the spirit does not belong here but then we have a purpose to be here it's not that we just have to realize the spirit and that's it you know leave the matter to its dirt and filth a wanderer sorry as one forgetting he searches for himself this is what we are all doing although we are all in our true selves we are divine each one of us no matter whether you are educated uneducated literate non literate lots of money no money male female we are all divine but we have forgotten ourselves why have we forgotten ourselves because the lord himself has forgotten himself purusha surrendered to prakriti that see you are the master now i am not the master hmm? as one forgetting he searches for himself what are we searching for we are looking for a lasting joy and contentment in our being and why we like certain things for example reading scriptures you know or having a good company because it gives us joy you now it makes our heart full so we are all searching for a lasting contentment a contentment that never goes away a fullness in the being you know a, a joy and inner joy which never withers away 
because the joy that I have is it withers away, right? At times it is there, at times it is not there. As one forgetting, he searches for himself. As if he had lost an inner light he seeks. As a sojourner lingering amid alien scenes. Sojourner is one who would do temporary stays, you know, like four days here, five days here. So we are sojourners. Hmm? Alien scenes, this relationship, that relationship, this country, that country, this home, that home, this thought, this story, this drama in the head, that story, that drama in the head. Temporary stays, you know, the whole material existence actually is a temporary stay because the spirit is a spirit. You know? Material world is a temporary stay for the spirit. But we settle down here. That's where we suffer. That's where we suffer, you know, that we settle down here. And it is considered socially very good thing to settle down. That, hey, the guy has settled down, he's got married. You know? So it's almost you know, it gives also a sad feeling that why to settle down? You know? Why not be always on a perpetual journey since we are on a perpetual journey? And at the same time, deeply settled within. You know? At the same time, also being in touch with our transcendental aspect so as a sojourner this uh, the one who has hidden himself the one who has forgotten himself he's as a sojourner he's lingering amid alien scenes he's sometimes there sometimes that enjoying the beauty of this place that place he journeys to a home he knows no more that's the thing we have faint memories of our true home our true self and we don't know how to find it. Like the Kasturi deer, you know, he searches. Where is the fragrance coming from? I, I want to find out. Sounds so familiar, feels so familiar. But he doesn't know where to look for. So he goes out in the forest and looks here and there and here and there. Never finds it. And that's why they say that good, that you have discontent. Because as long as I have discontent, it will propel me further to know this true home that I belong to. If I'm very kind of, you know, settled in my little family and my little relationships, if I'm settled there, then good for me. No need for a journey. Happy for you. Yeah. But uh, then there are those of us who have everything in life and some discontentment is still there. And if they can actually follow the discontentment, that why is it there? Why am I not easy? Why is this uneasiness perpetually there? I think that propels us further to our true purpose, true calling. So to be very sensitive of this discontent within. He journeys to a home he knows no more. Why he do doesn't know it anymore? Because he has gotten into a forgetfulness. Yeah. And this is what, you know, if as, as avatars, for example, uh, this avatar Meher Baba, if you have heard his name, you know, avatar Meher Baba, uh, who has close to Pune is his uh, ashram in Meherabad. So, you know, if you read his story of coming, like becoming conscious of that he is the divine, it's painful story. You know? he, he was not aware that he is divine. Why? Because mother says the moment you take birth into this material world, it's like an amnesia. You know, you, you fall into this forgetfulness, which is there also for a reason maybe. You know? And it takes time before one gets conscious of, oh my God, I am the divine. You know, so even avatars who actually are in uh, conscious connect with their divine nature, they also need a time of ripening and you know, maturation that, okay, now I realize that I am the avatar. You know? Such is the, uh, the quality of this matter, you know, the, the darkness, the inconscience. 
but then they become aware of this you know they are conscious as avatars they are conscious of their divine origin that their their divine home we uh, have to become conscious you know and all of us have that possibility it's not that it's only for the avatars and i you know this mortal being my life is limited to these four walls and kitchen and you know bathroom and all this and that that's not it we can never be contented in all these four walls of our home and when i say home it doesn't mean the material home it means the limited conceptual mind we can never be contented there so this is our journey he journeys to a home he knows no more yeah pure pure love yeah yeah i know maybe a little about it but how to go there i have no clue how to be pure love because all i see is impurities mixed in my love how to be pure kindness how to be pure wisdom i have lost it but i want it so this is the journey that we are all on journey to our true self which belongs to us it's our destiny no one can take it away from us and that's why in prayers mothers and you know mothers prayers it comes again and again as a certitude you know that divine certitude victory of divine is certain you know it's a certitude that we will in this lifetime maybe in 100 lifetimes we will find the divine within us we will manifest it out each one of us none is special it's not for a few particular individuals it's for each one of us so next time when this thought comes to us that no 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 i can't do it you know just stop there and let go of that thought because we all are equally capable it's our destiny to realize the divine so any reflections here anyone hi monica yeah hi swapna yes um yeah it was something you were saying about how i think my hair baba how his journey you know to becoming self aware was difficult and yeah. i realized like there's some kind of expectation in myself like oh if i'm progressing well on the journey if i'm doing the yoga well or if i'm close to the mother then i would be feeling peace i would be feeling ease mm. um and i heard you say something you know which kind of is more of the reality that to pay attention to the unease is very important mm. so uh but it's it's yeah i wonder if you could say more about that because it seems the opposite the unease can create uh, such discomfort or or confusion or even you know like the ego comes in with oh i'm not doing the yoga very well or something mm. like that mm. you know so it it like it can also distract but you were saying about like mm. Mm. still a, like a wake up alarm as i hear you say it yeah yeah although uh, swapna there is a subtle difference here because so maybe i can share uh, later the story if i find it online of for example we were referring to avatar meher baba here so that's a different kind of a unease that he had to go through the unease that we put ourselves in is a self created misery so there is a little difference hmm there is a little difference we fuel our created sto- stories in the mind we fuel we ruminate about our past we ruminate about our worries and that's how i fuel my unease but the story that i was sharing and good that you shared this uh, observation that there is a difference uh, when we talk about the unease that he had to go through before he woke up to the true consciousness and the unease that yeah i think in one sense it is same also but in other sense we also have to realize that we we actually we are the own petrol pumps if i can say of our own misery and this, yes i mean yeah yeah i please. can see yeah i can see the difference now it's like when it's that kind of thing and at the same time there seems a fine line between that unease that comes from not being satisfied with you know you can have everything on the outside it seems right yeah. on the material world or yeah. and still there's this uh you know 
a longing for something more. Exactly. So that exactly. seems to be that other unease, you know. Exactly. So it's like I guess maybe catching yeah. which one one is feeling yeah, the, yeah. resting in. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And actually, you know, the, the crux of the matter is that the basic unease is only one. And that unease is the separation, the feeling of this separation from the divine consciousness, which is our true self. You know, so I may be actually suffering uh, through my you know, job or family or something. What am I wanting there? I'm wanting rest, ease and contentment. So the basic want is only one. And if I recognize it, that what am I wanting? I think maybe something new comes up, opens up in front of me. Because it is not, see, imagine that I'm wanting, I think it will come, uh, maybe in the later lines, it will become more clearer what we are uh, sharing here, or maybe not, we'll talk about it. So let's continue, and because I'll just go here and there, <laughs> otherwise too much. So let's continue these lines. Uh, Swapna, you wanted to read, would you like to read these lines? Sure. Yeah. His own self's truth. He seeks who is the truth. He is the player who became the play. He is the thinker who became the thought. He is the many who was the silent one. Mm. Thank you. So here, you know, this is again very beautiful lines. His own self's truth he seeks. Who is the truth? So this is the paradox of our life. Who is looking for himself? Well, the Lord. Who has forgotten himself? Well, the Lord. That's the paradox. Who is truth? Well, the Lord himself. So the Lord himself, who is the truth, is seeking for his own truth. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> this is why we call it, you know, at times also divine comedy. What is this happening? It's mind boggling. You know, the mind cannot take it. He is the player who became the play. He, he lost himself in the play. He, be, he gave the rules. He started the play. And then what he did? He lost himself in the play. He, now he doesn't remember himself. He was the writer. He was the actor. He was the director. And now he's gotten so identified with the story or the drama that he has to be reminded. Just like Hanuman had to be reminded, you know, hey, friend, you can fly. Why don't you go flying over Lanka? Why do you need a ticket, for example? Hmm? So we have, that's why remembrance comes into picture. You know, we have to be reminded of our true nature. That we are so, so capable. We are all so capable. Not to believe in our limitations and limits of thoughts and ideas and dogmas and feelings and you know, whatever we get stuck into. He is the player who became the play. Player with a capital P. Player. He is the player. The original player. He is the thinker who became the thought. Now thought, look at the thought, it's so limited, so little, you know, very tiny, just gives us only a window here, never enough. And he is the thinker, he, through him, the thought came. He is that pregnant vast from which the thought arose. Hmm? He is the many who was the silent one. So the one who only was himself, there was nothing else but him. He is the creator. He is the only source of the multitude, the infinite multitude that we see in existence and that we don't see. Hmm? So this is the play. You know, this is what is it's like one, one's almost lack of words what to say about it. So there is a little 
a video that I want to like a little teaching, two three minutes that I want to share here, and this is about uh, uh, this teacher Rupert Spira. He shares about uh, an example. He shares of an example that imagine that there is a. Uh, I'll shortly talk about it and then share the clip. That imagine that there is a uh, actor. There is an actor who is called John Smith. Now John Smith goes out in the theater and he plays the role of King Lear, you know Shakespeare. He plays the role of King Lear, and uh, he loses himself in the role of King Lear, and all the troubles of King Lear now are troubling him because he has forgotten that he is John Smith. Now also he's the the, the actual metaphor goes really deep because. If you see who is King Lear, now for example, the example in Hindi we can use Anupam Kher. For example, everybody knows Anupam Kher. Now Anupam Kher goes out, plays a role of a villain or a hero, whatever, right? So if I dig out the hero, who will I find? I'll find Anupam Kher. The only actor is he. There is no one else but he. But then at times the story becomes so overwhelming. The story about the character becomes so overwhelming that one forgets one's true identity, you know, and one gets lost in the role and the drama. So through this example, he shares how the player plays the play, and how at times he begins to suffer. How at times we in our individual lives, when we stick too much tightly to our stories and ideas, and you know, uh, people and relationship that the, the story is about the relationships not the relationships but the stories we have have in mind about those people and you know past and future how it really suffocates us you know? so we have to wake up in that moment i have to wake up to my true self know that i am the i am not the role i am playing the role but i am something more than the role you know? so this is what comes out in this teaching i'll just put it on Yeah, I'll share it now. Just setting it. But which, like all metaphor, has has limits. So don't push the the limits of the metaphor. The the, the metaphor is is very simple. Uh, John Smith lives at home. He's not married, and he has no children, so he is at peace and happy. So, <laughs> but he goes to his theatre in the evening, and he puts on the character of King Lear, which just consists of an overcoat and a set of thoughts and feelings. And so fully does he play the part of King Lear, that he forgets that he is John Smith and he seems to become King Lear. So he now feels, I am King Lear. Now, so fully does he lose himself in the part of King Lear that when the play ends, he forgets to return. When his friend comes to congratulate him backstage after the performance, uh, he's surprised to find him miserable. So he says, that was fabulous, why are you miserable? And then King Lear starts relating his problems with his daughters and, and the French and the Kingdom of England. And, and, and his friend says to him, don't be, don't be silly. You're, you're not miserable because of your relationship with your daughters or the war with French or I I British politics. You're miserable because you've just forgotten who you are. Who are you? King Lear then says, well, I'm the, I'm the king of England, I'm the father of three daughters. And, and, and his friend says, no, don't be silly, you have not always been the king of England. 
you have not always been the king of England. You, you have not always been a father. So what, 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 what are you essentially? These are roles that have been added to you. They are not essential to you. What, what are you before being a king, being a husband, being a father? So then King Lear thinks for, for a while. And then he starts describing his thoughts. And, and, and his friend says to him, no, your thoughts are not always with you. You haven't always had thoughts. They are always leaving you. What, what are you prior to your thoughts? So then King Lear goes deeper into himself and he starts describing his feelings. And his friend says, no, but even your feelings, they are very intimate, but they are still not essential to you. They are always leaving, uh, appearing, leaving. So what you essentially are isn't even your feelings. And in this way, King Lear going deep, tracing his way back through layers of his experience, trying to find something that is essential to him. And then at one point there is this recognition, ah, oh, I am John Smith. And at that moment, his suffering comes to an end. So I would like to leave us here. Is there any reflection anyone wants to share? Yeah, I just want to say, Monica, thanks. I feel like these lines, these last lines in Savitri and that piece just now, yeah. it's like ultimately it's about uh longing for peace yeah you know and a longing to be with the mother and mm. that deeper essence is it's all perhaps synonyms for that you know Beautiful. of just feeling yeah. well and expansion mm -hmm. yeah 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 thank you and the suffering is at the level of the outer world exactly yes yeah. yes yeah thank you for that Welcome. Thank you for joining. Yeah, anything else, anyone? Thank you, Monica. Yeah. As you God. said, first itself, you said, no, we, we can reflect upon only few lines. It is enough. I feel yeah. today like, like that, actually. Yeah, it's so yeah. fulfilling. Thank you, Monica, for this beautiful Thank experience. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. For Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.